Hey, Todd here at the National RV Training Academy on location, ready for your tech tip. Now, I know you may be wondering, hey, Todd, you've been doing tech tips for five years and there's other people doing it. What's going on? I want to say the same thing. Yeah, what's going on? But here's the thing. A lot of instructors here, and we, we bring in special guests and all that stuff, so we want to kind of spread the love. That being said, <laughs> I want to go ahead and answer some of your questions. Let's see if some of those can do that. Just on the fly, answer questions. Go ahead, we'll wait. Welcome to another Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. All right, so here we go. <laughs> the first one, this is from Inspector H4548. Now, the handle, Inspector. So either it's a previous student who's an inspector, or maybe they're an inspector in another industry, homeowner's industry or something like that. Here's the question. So say I want to pre-cool my trailer and run the AC off of the inverter for maybe an hour uh, before arrival at the campground. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on that. Hey, before you get to the campground, hey, let's go ahead and start cooling the thing down so that way it's not 2 a.m. by the time you get rid of your swamp butt. That being said, if I'm running the inverter, the heavy load, say 1800 watts um, through a, an inverter, will it mess up my alternator? It all depends, okay? Yes, your seven pin connector from the truck to the RV. The seven pin connector allows charging from the alternator over to your RV. Now, you have a heavy demand, so you're never charging it up. The question, as you can see, is that going to hurt the alternator? Most alternators don't come with logic and they're not built to run at 100% output continuously hour upon hour. So there's the question. Hey, if I have a high demand and I've got an alternator not designed to run at 100%, Am I eventually going to mess it up? Yes, if, if the wire is big enough and the wire is short enough, right? As we learn with electricity, distance is resistance, right? The alternator is not designed to run at 100% load continuously, okay? But we have factors. If you did not upgrade the wire, in other words, you're using a seven pin connector, right? That may be a 14 gauge wire going back. That's going to limit the throughput. The distance, being over 20 foot, is gonna limit the throughput on that alternator. But here's the thing, okay? If you're running an air conditioner and everything else, and it's gonna be continuous, if you upgrade the wire, in other words, hey look, I'm gonna run a larger wire from my battery over to an Anderson connector, right? So I can connect with another Anderson connector, my truck, to the RV, and then run that over to my uh, inverter system. Then you have a potential of over maxing that alternator. In that event, you would wanna put in a limiter. We call it uh, a DC to DC charger or even a BIM. And a BIM is nothing but a relay. The chances with this question, because I don't know, and I'm sorry for getting into so much detail that we're over two minutes, but you asked, okay? If you do not upgrade the wire and just simply connect the seven pin connector, you're not gonna harm that alternator at all. But if you upgrade the wire, then you also either need to put in a 12 volt to 12 volt DC charger, which is a limiter, we can just call it a DC charger, or just depending on what you have, a BIM. If you have a motor coach, we put in a BIM, a battery isolation manager, right? Protects the alternator, runs it for 15 minutes on, 20 minutes off, 15 minutes on, 20 minutes off. Okay, a DC to DC charger is gonna limit the throughput, maybe to 30 amps, maybe to 50 amps as long as our alternator can handle that extra load. So in most cases, no, it's not gonna hurt it. But if you upgrade the wire, then you need to add extra parts. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the blue. You say go. Okay. Are you on? I don't see a red light. I'm recording. No, you're not. Yes, I am. There's no recording. 
there's no red light. Oh, sure enough, there's a red light. <clears throat> All right, let's do this.